And now to another big story we're following for you. What court watchers are describing as a major win for lawyers prosecuting pop star Michael Jackson and a sharp turn for his child molestation trial. A judge says evidence from prior sexual molestation allegations against the singer will be allowed in his current trial. MSNBC's Jennifer London has been following all the today's developments for us. She joins us live outside the courthouse with the latest. So that's the headline, Jennifer. Fill us in on the rest of the information. Well, Allison, lots to tell you about happening here in Santa Maria. First, let's bring our viewers up to speed on today's testimony. Testifying earlier today, comedian George Lopez arriving here at the courthouse as only a Hollywood celebrity can. He showed up in a white stretch limo followed by a small entourage of people. Lopez called as a prosecution witness. He testified today that he met the accuser in 1999 at a comedy camp and he befriended the young boy. He said that when the accuser fell sick with cancer, he did go to see at the hospital and Lopez said that it was actually the boy's father who repeatedly asked for mother and not the boys uh, asked for money rather and not the boy's mother. Now this testimony supports prosecution uh, testimony earlier last week from comedian Louise Palenker who said the same thing. On the stand right now is George Lopez's wife. Earlier today a critical ruling from the judge, Judge Rodney Melville, saying the prosecution can call witnesses and introduce evidence related to prior allegations against Michael Jackson, a ruling some legal experts say may hurt the defense. The trial here will have many trial after many trial as to other offenses. It will be significantly longer, but it's significantly different than what we had last week or in the beginning of this trial up until last Friday. This is now a trial about pattern evidence, about propensity, and once a pedophile, always a pedophile. The jury will hear testimony from one alleged victim who the prosecution says was molested by Jackson in 1990. That accuser settled with Jackson for $2.4 million and that, uh, no charges were ever filed. Allison, it is possible the prosecution may start calling witnesses related to the prior allegations sometime later this week. That pivotal day in the Michael Jackson trial, the judge in this case is set to make a ruling today if prosecutors can bring up previous child molestation allegations against Michael Jackson. One court observer calls these allegations the prosecution's nuclear bomb. NBC's Mike Taibbi has more. Michael Jackson paid millions in two settlements to a 1990 accuser, the son of a Neverland maid, whose claim that the singer fondled him over his clothing never resulted in a prosecution, and to a teen in 1993 who declined to testify in a criminal case after he received a settlement from Jackson of more than $15 million. To those allegations, as in the current case, Jackson insists he was absolutely innocent. None of these stories are true. They're totally fabricated, and it's very sad and it's very, very painful. But prosecutors want to use the California law, which allows witnesses and evidence from past uncharged, unproven allegations. Basically show Michael Jackson to be a serial child molester. But Judge Rodney Melville made it clear before the Jackson trial started he would not allow prosecutors to save a weak case against the pop star by admitting old evidence. The author of the law allowing such evidence says helping prosecutors try difficult child sex abuse cases is risky. The worst nightmare scenario is that evidence comes in against somebody who is innocent of both the, the prior allegations and the current offense, and then they end up being convicted. Most Jackson trial observers believe that some of the evidence will be admitted, especially from the two cases Jackson paid to settle. I think it's important that at least one of the two boys testify. In the trial now underway, the accuser and his brother and sister have all been shown to have changed their stories and have each admitted to lying about some things. That's why the judge's decision on whether to admit any past evidence could be the turning point in this trial. For today, Mike Taibbi, NBC News, Santa Maria. These two false allegations must be placed in a proper perspective. Mr. Jackson has interacted with millions of children. Many millions of children around the world love Michael Jackson and never allege that he harmed them in any way. It is official. The ruling that could make or break the case against Michael Jackson has been handed down. Jurors will hear about prior allegations of abuse by Michael Jackson. Testimony about five other incidents fair game will come from a handful of witnesses, including a number of n former Neverland employees and one of the prior accusers who was paid millions for his silence back in the 1990s. The judge saying earlier today he'd, quote, 
permit testimony with regard to sexual offenses and alleged pattern of grooming activity by the defendant. Up until now, prosecutors have been taking some heat for the state of their case, but this ruling could turn it all around for them. NBC's Mike Taibbi was in the courtroom today. He's standing by at the courthouse for the latest. So, Mike, who are we going to see on the witness stand, and what are they going to say about these alleged prior acts? Well, you call it a handful of witnesses. It is exactly that, Dan. Nine in number. You know, this was a big ruling. You could tell because it got really personal and intense in the arguments before Judge Melville. At one point, Tom Mesereau, whom you just heard from, Jackson's lead attorney, saying the prosecution is desperate, that uh, their case is weak, it's bad, and it's getting worse. And Tom Stedden, the prosecutor, answering back that Mesereau himself was obnoxious, abusive, mean-spirited in his questioning of the accuser in this case. But at the end of the day, Melville, as you said, the judge allowed of these nine witnesses. They are, and we'll give you a list here, that 1990 accuser to whom you referred, his mother, and the mother of the 1993 accuser, uh, that accuser and his family were paid upwards of $15 million. Uh, and then people, Charlie Michaels, who's a female security guard from that 93 case, Philip Lamarck, a chef at Neverland in 93, Adrian McManus, who's a maid, uh, and Ralph Chacon, a security guard, the two of them involved in a suit against Jackson, which they lost and were ordered to pay damages upwards of a million dollars. Uh, Bob Jones, who worked for MJJ Productions for a number of years, writing a book, and Charmaine Sternberg, who worked for MJJ Productions uh, and was a gift coordinator, which means presumably that she could testify to some of this grooming activity uh, that you were just mentioning. But here's the thing. I talked to Jim Rogan last week, the former California assemblyman who authored the bill allowing this old evidence in, and he said this could be a case to be careful what you wish for for the prosecution, because every one of these witnesses is going to be attacked by Jackson's team. Many of them sold their stories to supermarket tabloids and tabloid television. Two, as I mentioned, were involved in a losing lawsuit against Jackson. Others, Bob Jones writing a book. Others have changed their stories demonstrably, and you know that Tom Miller as he said in court today, is going to conduct full-blown trials, if it comes to that, to try and impeach every one of these stories. But the stories are going to get in, uh, it's cumulative stuff, and you wonder what the effect of the, on the jury is going to be when they hear not one, not two, not three or four, but five previous incidents and witnesses who are saying it happened then too. Very quickly, Mike, uh, today George Lopez, the comedian on the witness stand, quickly summarize if you can. Strong witness for the prosecution, he said that the mother of the accuser in the instant case never once asked for money, never once asked for any assistance whatsoever, and that's a cornerstone of the defense case of the mother was in it for the money. So another strong witness uh, for the prosecution. George Lopez saying it was actually the father uh, instead of the mother who seemed to be sort of trying Correct. to scam him. Right. Mike Tidy. Uh, actually, you're going to stick right. around. All right. uh, my take. I've said it before, even if this boy and his family are of questionable credibility, this could change everything for prosecutors. It is the right legal decision, a devastating blow to Jackson's defense. How devastating, though. Joining me now, criminal defense attorney, NBC News legal analyst Ron Richards, who is in court today, and criminal defense attorney John Burris and Connecticut State Prosecutor Susan Filan. All right, Ron, I told you this was going to be admitted, and you kept telling me it's not going to be. Well, Dan, I was still waiting for uh, some accuser to actually want to testify in this case, and still we're not getting any. I think the prosecutor is going to be in for a You're getting the 1990 well, accuser. Wait a minute, that's a big deal. You're making it seem like this isn't a big deal. It's going to be another kid who's going to come into that courtroom, now an adult, and say, yeah, Michael Jackson molested me, and that's why he paid X amount of dollars to me. Well, let me respond to that. The, that kid was interviewed by Lauren Weiss, who's a district attorney in Los Angeles, now a Superior Court judge, and she didn't think a crime had been committed, and neither did the Santa Barbara sheriffs when they interviewed him. And, and nobody filed any charges at that time, and I think that it's going to be very suspect 15 years after the fact coming into court. John Burris, uh, you agree with Ron? No big deal. Come on. Well, it's a this big a deal. In the, deal. No, it's a huge deal in the sense that the evidence is coming in and at least jury will have ac access to it. But I do think that it's not necessarily de uh, 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 the death knell for Michael uh, Jackson in this case because each one of these witnesses will have their own credibility problems. And when that happens, you may then have the whole question about what is the motive here? What's the interest here? And it very well may be that this could be very helpful in the long run to show how desperate the prosecution case really is as it relates to this other case because you have to bring in all of these others to try to make this case through these other witnesses. It, it's not good. You'd rather not have it, but it's not the end. He does have an opportunity to really um, blast these individual witnesses as to their own individual motives. Yeah, but Susan, the problem is that, that each individual is going to have a different motive. Uh, 
And look, I'm, I'm not saying that it's necessarily going to lead to conviction, but this is the biggest thing that's come out of the Michael Jackson case for the prosecution, in my mind, even bigger than the accuser testifying, because he had problems. And I think that this is, is <coughs> the one thing that could lead these jurors, in conjunction with everything else, to convict. Dan, it's huge. It's huge. I mean, on the one hand, they hear the accuser testify about what happened to him. They've heard him cross. They've heard him be impeached partially. But now they're going to hear a parade of other people saying, it happened to me, it happened to me, it happened to me. And it's pretty much identical. It is the same pattern of grooming. It's going to be very, very hard for a jury to just disregard everybody's lying, absolutely everybody, everybody in this case and everybody in every other case. I think it's... It's not game over for Michael Jackson, but it's a huge win for the prosecution. Yeah. And the prosecution can't speak, but one of the things that the Peterson prosecutors got to say finally when it was all over and the gag order was removed was, what, if they could have said two words all along, they would have said, trust us. Yeah, well, you know what? Don't give them the credit that they want to get now. The bottom line is they were trying that case horribly at the beginning of this case. Let's not revise history just because they won the case because they had a lot of strong evidence that they were somehow, you know, the Clarence Darrows of our day. I mean, the bottom line is those guys, you know, look, I like the guys. They did a good, they did a good job at the end of the case, but at the beginning of that case, it was a disaster. Um, all right. You know, Dan, I don't agree that this te testimony should have come in. Uh, a lot of this testimony is well over 10 years old. It is sort of a rule of thumb that evidence over 10 years old on pattern and practice, common plan and scheme doesn't come in. So this is very surprising. Mike Taib, you want to get in? Yeah, not under California law. That's absolutely not the case. In mm -hmm. fact, I think Tom Snedden made a very tight argument based on case law saying that there is not a situation where this evidence was allowed in and a court of appeals overturned it, that the legislature and the judiciary up to the California Supreme Court affirmed the admissibility of this evidence. Yeah. So on that basis, it's in. The, well, the I, go to, is, I go to the question of time. You know, yeah. I think it's remote. It's very remote in time. But the, the law in but, California Dan, doesn't talk Dan, about remoteness. It talks about it, well, it does. It actually does talk about remoteness. Uh, but, but, but Dan, there's it's not never, the code. Ron Richards, go ahead. But, but, but just real quick, there's never been a case, Susan, and you know this, in the history of California jurisprudence where you've had five people accusing someone else of molestation, but those five don't show up. And what is Tom Sinner going to say when that child actor, and we all know who it is, gets on the stand and says, those witnesses of yours were lying. That's going to be a problem. Yeah. All right. Well, we shall see. Look, again, we're talking about some people who are going to say that they witnessed abuse. Uh, there are going to be others, you know, one kid who's going to, now an adult is going to come in. i got to tell you, I think some of the witnesses could be even more powerful because they didn't get the money.